security? Who let Vicky Vale into the Batcave? I'm sitting there working, and I turn around, there she is. Oh, hi, Vic. Come on in. You f***ing ungrateful little bat shit. That dude was trying to get you laid! What's going on, Internet Land? It's time for another editorial. This time I want to talk a little bit about Alfred. Ah yes, Alfred, Bruce Wayne's loyal manservant, surrogate father, and prime excuse maker. Many things have changed throughout the years, but in these troubled times there are certain truths that we hold to be self-evident. And the foremost of these is that Alfred is a staunch, loyal supporter of Bruce's escapades, and he would never, ever betray that trust for any- OH MY GOD! He just- I mean, look at that! He- he just let Vicky Vale into the Batcave! A broad! A dame! In his cave! His literal man cave! The dark treehouse of secrets where he descends alone to play with his toys. Can he do that? Did you not see the sign that said no girls allowed? How hard is it to get good help these days? Hyperbole aside, this was a controversial decision back in the day, and one that I honestly don't have a problem with. Is it the Alfred from the comics? Not really, but nothing about this movie really was like the comics, or I should say the comics most people were familiar with. And I think that's something very important to remember when talking about this movie. It's not a faithful recreation, it's a creative adaptation. Sure, people can complain about how Batman should never kill, hashtag not my Bruce, but this one came out in the Robocop era, and he's got a body count that would make the Predator blush. This was an age when comic book movies weren't established. It was an age where Marvel wasn't even a gleam in Disney's eye. Put simply, It is the age of gargoyles. No, but it was an age where expectations had to be upended. Up until that point, the public conception of Batman was, well, this. Of course, this was the result of the Comics Code Authority, a self-policing code of ethics and standards for the industry launched in response to a widespread public concern that gory, horrific comic book content would warp children's fragile little minds. Basically, these were the fun Nazis. That's how we went from Batman knocking a criminal into a vat of acid in his first issue to this. Or how about this doozy? Batman totally hangs a guy from his bat plane, and when he dies, says he's probably better off. And yet a few years later, we get this. Batmite and Bathound? This is why when people try to tell me the Burton film isn't really Batman, I always have to ask, well, which Batman are we talking about? Cause early Batman? I think that's somebody more than capable of doing something like this. And honestly, this kind of fascist 30s, 80s noir Batman makes a little more sense to me. It's not that I approve of this behavior, but I could see how being a rich, loner, revenge-obsessed vigilante who dresses up like a gargoyle and pummels the hell out of criminals might, just might, bend the rules to accommodate his psychotic tendencies. But no, in Nolan's trilogy, we get a Batman who says, look, I'm gonna totally step on your constitutional rights and use KGB style shit to listen in on cell phone calls. But it's only gonna be this once, I swear. And then Lucius Fox is like, well, if it's only this once. Yeah, no, totally, Scout's honor. And I'm like, come on, who are you kidding? I love The Dark Knight, but that's a huge suspension of disbelief. And it's probably one of the reasons I love the boys so much. Because as much as I'd love to believe in a Superman or a Captain America, Odds are they'd probably be like Homelander. By the way, if you haven't watched season one of The Boys, it's amazing. So what about Alfred? Well, Alfred is the logical result of this much darker take on Batman. See, everything about Batman over the decades has been a direct reaction to what came before it. It's like a swinging pendulum. 
the goofiness of the 60s Batman was an overreaction to his dark noir beginnings in the 30s. The dark dystopian take of the 80s was itself an overreaction to the lighthearted Adam West show. The animated series, meanwhile, was an attempt to synthesize both sides. That might be why it's still the best iteration for some people. And the Nolan films are a downright Spartan reaction to the garish fantasy of the Schumacher films, which were a gaudy, colorful reaction to the dark and gritty Burton films. See the pattern here? It's like physics. For every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. So it goes when we have focus group loving studio bean counters involved. So for each iteration of Batman, you need a set of characters to match its tone. And within the context of the movie, every one of Alfred's actions makes sense. Is it the comic? No. But this iteration of Batman was not as concerned with being a 100% faithful adaptation. More than anything, it had to convince the world that Batman could be taken seriously as a dark, gritty fantasy. And look at the results. Without it, we wouldn't have anything that we have today. No Dark Knight, no animated series, no Justice League, no Arrow or Flash or Supergirl. Hell, no Wonder Woman, Aquaman, you name it. These things exist because Tim Burton's Batman happened. But in order to get there, the creative team had to get their hands dirty. And the darker the tone became, the more a plucky manservant who just seems to blindly go along with his master's killing sprees doesn't make that much sense. And why would it? Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne is a nerdy, unhinged, violent vigilante who sleeps upside down, owns a fully armed rocket tank, flies in a stealth bomber, and, let's be honest, totally killed Johnny Gobbs before this movie started. Hey, look, man, Johnny Gobbs got ripped and took a walk off a roof, all right? No big loss. Any sane friend, servant, father figure, whatever, should be unnerved by this. It's the only reasonable step when you take Batman this dark, a direction that, as we said, was necessary to get where we are today. So, why all the hate? Well, some people claim it's unbefitting of the character to just let Vicky Vale into the Batcave. And to them I ask, were you watching this movie from the beginning? Because it seems pretty obvious that Alfred is really uncomfortable with the whole Batman thing. Check out his reaction when Bruce returns from a shootout at City Hall. I'm relieved that you're home, sir. I think clearly he has concerns for the trouble Bruce seems to attract. And if I were a betting man, I'd say this Alfred wants Bruce to have a normal life. Hell, from the get-go, it seems like he's trying to set Bruce up with Vicky. He saves his ass after a disastrously awkward first date to the point that Vicky gushes over how awesome he is. He's really wonderful. Even Bruce can hear the wedding bells ringing in Alfred's head. I feel that there's a certain weight that lifts when she is here. Alfred, why don't you marry her? That's not exactly what I had in mind, sir. I can't go on with that right now. If not now... When? And this guy eventually let Vicky Vale into the Batcave. You don't say. Shocking. Oh wait, it gets better. Perhaps you could try telling her the truth. And bam! Right there, we have our setup. Not only does Alfred tell Bruce to be honest, but Bruce agrees with him. And what does he do? He goes over to Vale's apartment and nearly spills his guts before getting interrupted. So in no universe does this not make sense. It makes total sense. Alfred's whole M.O. seems to be, Sir, if you would just bag a trophy wife like any normal billionaire, maybe you wouldn't have the free time to throw on Halloween costumes and kick the shit out of people. Well, okay, some people might say, but you didn't have to let Vicky in. What about keeping Bruce's secret? Well, the secret was already out. Bruce was already going to tell her the truth. And let's be honest, Vicky already knew. Oh yeah, that's something people don't talk about much. She already knew he was Batman. And before anyone chimes in and says that goes against the spirit of the comics, no it doesn't, because Vicky Vale goes way back in the comics. First appearance, Batman number 49, October 1948. First on-screen appearance, 1949, in the serial titled, oh so imaginatively, Batman and Robin. And from the very beginning, it was a running plot thread that she was onto Bruce. So the movie has some precedence in the source material to go this route. 
Now, had Alfred just invited her over and said, By the way, Master Wayne is Batman. Here's the cave, and here's where he totally copped a few while trying to steal the film you shoved in your brazier. I'd agree. That's pretty out there. But that's not what the film is implying happened at all. In this key scene, Knox reveals the history behind the back alley Bruce visits. Listen to this dialogue. Poor kid watched the whole thing happen in front of him. Look at the look on the face. It was the same in front of City Hall. What do you suppose something like this does to a kid? Fail. Don't get personal! And right there, right when Knox asks what this does to a kid, she gets it. It's like a light went off, and she goes straight to Bruce's place. Now, how do I know that she knows? Well, for one thing, the pacing, the cuts, the acting, everything in this scene is telling us this. It's just not holding our hand like a lot of modern comic book movies do. You have to read between the lines. But even if it's not explicitly spelled out, there is a way to confirm this, because it was actually in the original script, First Draft, 1986. In this version, Sam Hamm wrote a full-on scene where Vicky claims to know Bruce is Batman, and she tells Knox, cause Knox figured it out first, and then Knox goes to Bruce, cause it's a love triangle, and Knox wants Bruce to back off Vicky, but it's okay, cause Knox dies at the end. Oh, and Robin's in it. I am not making this up. It's a fascinating read, and I think we got the better edited version, warts and all, with the various rewrites. So Vicky clearly put it together, knocked on the door, and told Alfred, I know. Now, what is stopping Alfred from confirming this? What do we know about him? He's not comfortable with Bruce's escapades, he thinks Vicky is a good influence, he encouraged him to tell the truth, Bruce nearly did, and then right before Vicky showed up at the door, this happened. I have no wish to fill my few remaining years grieving for the loss of old friends. All their sons. Tell me this guy wouldn't have just said, You know what, Miss Vale, you're right. Slide down the bat pole and he'll be at the first desk on the right, having some sort of acid flashback about how the Joker killed his parents, which really is more problematic than me letting you in, but who am I to judge? Do whatever you want, comic book nerds. Everything Alfred does makes perfect sense from the perspective of this is a darker, creepier Batman that worries his friends and family and confidants. And I find it ironic that both Burton and Sam Hamm have done everything they can to wash their hands of this scene. Hamm said straight up in multiple interviews, don't look at me, wasn't my idea, and he's right. Because of a writer's strike, he was forbidden to touch the script during the London shoot, which means there were numerous cuts, changes, and additions that weren't his. Some for better, and some for worse. But the Alfred editions, I'd argue, were for the better. It ties into the themes of romance, duality, revenge, family, and gives Alfred a story arc. And yet, even Tim Burton wasn't willing to defend the move just one film later. I mean, look at this clip from Batman Returns. Security? Who let Vicky Vale into the Batcave? I'm sitting there working and I turn around, there she is. Oh, hi Vic, come on in. You fucking ungrateful little bat shit. That dude was trying to get you laid. Who's gonna be your wingman now? Robin? This acrobat turned orphan likes Saturday morning cartoons and dreams one day being bare naked with a girl. Yeah, that's what I thought. In the end, this Alfred may not be the most faithful to the comics, but he's the only Alfred this universe can support. Did we really want to see this kind old codger being totally okay with his employer's nightly executions? Think about it. And you know what? At least he's internally consistent. Contrast his outings in Batman and Batman Returns with Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Michael Caine's Alfred in Batman Begins in the Dark Knight for the very reason that it's 180 degrees different from Michael Gauff's Alfred. But that gets thrown out the window in the third film. I mean, one second he's all over this idea. When Bruce is gonna turn himself in, Alfred's like, Endure. Be the outcast. Gotham needs you. And what about Rachel? F*** Rachel. Rachel's Kentucky Fried Chicken. What you need to do is dress up as a bat. Now get on that rooftop and risk your life. And don't ask about the letter I burned. Then eight years later, he's like, I won't bury another member of the Wayne household. I'm leaving. Saving your life is more important. Wow, bang up job, Alfred. How many times did Bruce fall off a building, get poisoned, dangle from a monorail? You stood idly by the whole time. In fact, you told him to keep going. 
You kidding me with this protection racket? But now that the League of Shadows is back and they destroyed the Wayne Fortune and plan to take over Gotham, now is the time to hang up the cape and cowl? I get it, Bruce is out of shape, but even that doesn't make a difference, because through a cheap trick that would make even MacGyver roll his eyes, Bruce gets his broken back fixed. From a rope. A rope! I know, it's, it's not as good as Empire. But hey, maybe that was the point. Alfred said, You're not Batman anymore, you need to find another way. But as far as I can tell, everything still hinges on Bruce dressing up as a bat and punching a bunch of dudes. If anything, we just went full circle, which is to say, nowhere. Maybe this wouldn't bother me so much if people didn't actually try to use the excuse on me, Well, at least he didn't let Vicky Vale into the bat cave! No, that would require logic. This is so much worse, because not only does it deviate from the comics, but it doesn't make a lick of sense. Say what you want about Tim Burton's Alfred, but at least he stuck around. His arc was about the resignation that Bruce would never have a normal life. Letting Vale in wasn't an act of disloyalty, it was merely trusting someone that Bruce already trusted implicitly, enough to nearly tell her the truth. Alfred merely finished the job, and he didn't up and leave when it was clear this relationship wouldn't work out. So at least within the context of Burton's universe, the characters stick to their guns. Now, is this to say that Burton's Batman has the best Alfred? No. In fact, if you want to see this done right, and in a way that stays true to the comics, watch Mask of the Phantasm. Nothing beats that Alfred's reaction when Bruce puts on the mask for the first time. My God. Now that's the reaction of someone clearly uncomfortable with their master's lifestyle choices. And Alfred's speech at the end of Mask of the Phantasm is pitch perfect. Vengeance blackens the soul, Bruce. You walk the edge of that abyss every night. But you haven't fallen in, and I thank heaven for that. Now that's my Alfred. But remember, we wouldn't have that if we didn't have this. So let's cut the 89 Alfred some slack. In fact, let's cut the 89 film some slack. It may not be perfect, but it didn't have to be. More than anything, it was a proof of concept, one that proved Batman could be a powerhouse at the box office. Without it, we would not be where we are today, a world where Batman is everywhere. And as a result, we've got a variety of Alfreds, enough to please just about anybody. So here's to Batman's secret weapon. Whether he has reservations or not, he'll always be there. Eh, yeah, mostly. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. Who's your favorite Alfred? Let us know in the comments. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Until next time... Sir, shall we change the channel to a program with some dignity and class? A love connection, perhaps? Wow, Al. That's harsh. I take it all back.